Welcome to our Facebook Live event. Thank you everyone for joining us or dialing in or watching from wherever you are. This evening we're going to be talking about GPs and GP access and um, all the things that we've been facing over the past year. The past year or two we know that the NHS has been under some real strain and we've been focusing a lot around our hospitals and our carers and our clapping for carers but we wanted to really focus on GP practices this evening. Now, over the course of the past few weeks, we've been asking people to feed in their questions and their questions have informed what we're going to talk about this evening. So we're just going to have a bit of a discussion around the things that are happening across GP services. Now, this is my first Facebook live event or Facebook event, so do bear with me. If you are hard of hearing and you want us to send this video out to you with subtitles on, please put a little note in the chat. Equally, if you would like to access this in a different language, put a little note in the comments section and we can um, ensure that somebody gets back to you afterwards and, and helps you with that. I said chat and I mean comment section. You can tell that I'm new to this Facebook, can't you? Now I've got, um, I'm not gonna be doing this on my own this evening. I've got a panel with me. So I'm just gonna ask them to introduce themselves now so you know who it is that's talking to you. So I'm gonna hand over to you, Samantha, first. Hi, I'm Samantha Young, I'm practice manager in Malden. Fantastic, thank you. Teresa? Hi, I'm Teresa and I'm a social prescriber for Cone Valley PPN. Fantastic, and Dr Shaw? Hello, I'm Dr Shaw, I'm a GP in South End area uh, and I also work uh, as a clinical director for a primary care network and I'm sure we'll discuss what that means a little later on. Fantastic, thanks everybody for your introductions. Now, First of all, I'm going to um, give you some stats or some vital statistics. And I'm going to read these because I can't retain numbers in my head. OK, so first of all, it's been estimated that GP practices across Mid and South Essex continue to receive around 1,340,600 calls every month. That's a massive number. So to give you a little bit of context of that and not mentioning the football, that's enough to fill Wembley Stadium 14 times with nearly half a million or 469,000 appointments took place in April 2021 alone. That's 6% higher than this time in July last year. So July was when we came out of um, lockdown last time. So that's around 60% of those appointments still took place face to face. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a context of, of what um, our colleagues in GP practices have been dealing with over the past few months and, and years. Um, and we're just gonna talk first of all, a little bit about why GP practices are so busy at the moment. So um, Samantha Young, can you give me a little bit of a bit of an update from a practice manager's perspective about why you think things have been so busy. Yeah, hi, thanks, Sam. Um, so three of the main reasons. Um, firstly, COVID-19 saw the introduction of total telephone triage. Um, this meant that everybody had to call in to provide um, information for the reason for their needing their care or advice, um, reason for wanting to speak to the clinician, that was a lot of people calling into the practice. Online appointments were taken offline so that we weren't offering um, that facility. So we had to revert back to telephones. Um, this was to protect patients and staff from the risk of infection. Um, we delivered these via phone and video consultations. Um, telephone triage is not a new thing. Uh, we were doing telephone triage before the pandemic, um, but obviously the use of it has increased dramatically during the pandemic. So the phone lines with everybody calling through for their appointments is number one. Number two, the COVID-19 vaccination programme. GP practices um, have done an incredible um, amount of work with this and we've risen to the challenge to implement the largest mass um, immunisation programme in history. So that is just amazing. But all of those patients were calling in to their GP practices to get their appointments, find out when they could have their vaccination and a lot of queries around that in general. Um, also now we've got the booster program underway and the um, flu program. So there's lots of calls coming in about that and wanting further information about that. 
Um, and lastly, the impact of COVID, which is delaying care for some of our patients. So where we would normally um, refer these people into the hospitals for further referrals and everything else, that is taking time as well because they're under huge pressure with everything that they're doing. So referrals are delayed um, and people are calling back to the practice to find out where that referral is, where are they in the system, which is again causing the GP practices to take up a lot of that telephone interaction with our patients so our phone lines are incredibly busy excellent thanks Matt for that's really helped give a bit of a context about how busy we really are now I know that over 250 additional professionals have been added to the service um, this year from physios right through to mental health practitioners and social prescribers which we're going to find out a little bit more about um, in a little while and that they've been recruited over the past two years and that we're looking to recruit another 200 this year. But Dr. Shaw, what else is being done um, to kind of help with how busy everybody is? Thanks, Sam. Thank you for uh, having me as well. Um, as, as Samantha said, it's um, been incredibly, incredibly busy. So we're, we're tackling things in various different ways. And as you rightly said, we've one of those methods is by recruitment. Um, there's traditionally been a, a sort of an understaffing in primary care GP services. So um, we've got this mass program really to get all these different members of staff, healthcare professionals to help out. Initially, short term with uh, the pandemic and various other pressures, lots of practices increased the uh, what we call the locum cover. So the, the amount of uh, staff, that, whether it's nursing cover or, or GP cover, um, so lots of agency staff, nursing staff. Um, so lots of overtime was done. Uh, in the longer term, it is a different ball game. So we're looking with um, the support of NHS England, who have been incredible over the last uh, two years. Really, it's just been um, quite a phenomenal um, last last couple of years. We're looking at essentially local GP practices working closely together um, in what we call a primary care network. Um, so this is a, a sort of a buzz term that you, you may start to hear about in the um, well, from now on, really. So local practices of varying sizes working closely together to look at their local area, their local needs for their patients. Some patients, some practices may have issues with more elderly, frailer patients that need different types of access. Others might be working closely around university centres, for example, and have a younger, more dynamic mobile population. So we're looking at how we address those issues. So these primary care networks have been set up, um, which, as, as you alluded to, with the 250 additional um, healthcare professionals and more to come, uh, those range from as you said, social prescribers, and our, we've got Terry coming on shortly, who's going to explain her role. Um, a brief uh, sort of uh, introduction from me is that essentially a social prescriber is, I, I would call it the yellow pages of social care. So when patients come to me and ask me a question that I do not know the answer to, the one person that will know that answer will be someone like Terry. Um, so they're a fantastic resource, a new role, and, and Terry will go into a lot more detail about that shortly. We've also got um, teams of emergency care practitioners, so paramedics, for example. Uh, a lot of practices and primary care networks have been working to get uh, uh, those staff recruited, which can help with home visits, for example, care home patients, so those that, that need those visits. We've working really closely with our, with the hospitals and the community services as well. Um, so our palliative care, district nurses, you know, we want to give quality care for everyone. And, and that's been the message throughout the pandemic is to carry on. Um, the worry I've got is that, that obviously over the last year, we haven't seen that many people wanting to come out towards us unless it was for things like COVID and that is really really increased of late um, to the point where people are coming with lots and lots and lots of problems which I'm more than happy to help with I just want I want them to come to me more I want to be able to help them and uh, you know we're seeing a lot of um, I suppose poorly controlled long-term conditions that needed uh, extra management we're seeing um, patients scared, frustrated, 
totally understandable and, and and i say to all my staff that a lot of these uh, issues that the practices are facing it is because of that fear and and we're here to help so as much as it is to to be nice to our staff and help them but you know we we are here to help you um other other staff you mentioned mental health professionals so we've got um trying to give that bridge that gap between mental health and the community uh, sadly covid has seen a, a terrible, terrible increase in, in mental health cases that, that's probably uh, certainly about 30, 40% um, of, of the patients I speak to almost every day. Um, as you said, face-to-face appointments never stopped. We've been doing those throughout. It's just trying to work out who can we, who can we see that needs to be seen? Who can we manage via a phone? Here, who can we do uh, consultations by video? My area, for example, we've got a bit of a split. We've got elderly, frail patients that that obviously those kind of access roles are, are, are trickier. And we've got some very young um, patients that, that commute to work, for example, and having that ability to access different different methods of consultations is huge for them. Uh, we've been doing a lot of all of this before. It's just, uh, as you said, it's it's escalated um, in, in a positive way with, with COVID and there's not many positives to have come out of it, but certainly the sort of technological advancements has been one of those positives. Um, other, other things um, that we've been doing, so you might have seen in some of your practices something called a surgery pod. So that is a, a, a essentially a, a device that can measure your blood pressure, your height, your weight, so you don't need to go and see the GP or the nurse if it's just for a um, a blood pressure check that links automatically with the computer systems. You, the, the GPs have set thresholds so that any abnormal results are flagged to them, so they can then contact those patients. Um, most, you know, lots of lots of GP practices have got the ability to do mobile ECGs, mobile blood pressures. So again, we don't we're trying to limit those um, those need, you know, trying to help the hospital so we don't have to. Um, uh, sort of keep burdening patients in that way. So there's an awful lot of things that are going on. Um, I, I could list a hundred more if you want. So I'm, I'm conscious of uh, uh, others wanting to speak. Thanks, Dr. Shaw. It's really useful, and we may come back to some of those if we if we don't get a chance to talk about them right now. But Teresa, you mentioned your role earlier on. Could you just tell me a little bit about what a social prescriber is, and and what you and your team are doing to help people? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, I'm Teresa, and obviously I'm a social prescriber, which many people don't know we actually exist at the moment. Um, we're a relatively new service, and we've been working with GP surgeries throughout the UK, so you'll find one of us wherever you live. Um, our main focus is to give people the time and the focus to delve down into what matters to them. So it's a more of a personal, holistic approach that we actually you know, take on. Um, our role within the GP surgeries is to support the patients who present with a medical need, which underlying actually is a more personal social element um, rather than medical. So with that, we discuss with them via sort of um, health coaching techniques to explore what, what their real issues are, how they want to go about um, supporting themselves with that and also gearing them towards self-help. Um, we make sure that we know everything that's available within our local communities and we use that information to connect people to community groups, agencies for practical help, maybe emotional support. We also um, link in with nurseries, libraries, book clubs, um, local cleaners, it could be anything, um, to help someone live as independently as they possibly can within their own home, whilst not accessing medical or statutory services. Um, we work very closely with local housing associations, voluntary services, um, community support such as therapies, such as physiotherapists. Um, we work closely with um, the fire department, police, hospitals, housing, um, housing associations, I think I might have already mentioned. Um, 
We also take self-referrals. So if you feel that your medical condition has been um, heightened by your personal situation, then you can always refer through to us and we can seek support of which um, is best tailored to you. Um, we typically start with telephone conversations or a meeting face to face in the surgery. Um, and from there, we will continue with that support and we will also visit you at home should you need it as well. Typical caseload for us is approximately 200 to 500 people a year, depending on the complexity of the people's needs. Um, and yeah, that's us in a nutshell, really. Still developing the service, so we could expand and be more of us as, as we go through. Um, and also a lot of the social um, prescribers are also looking at bringing the service into the community more than actually being based in doctor's surgeries. For example, myself and um, my colleague, who's a health coach, we're looking at having what's known as a wellbeing hub within our PCN um, so that we can support everybody within their own villages, towns, so that they don't have that feeling that they're going to the doctor's surgery and they have to talk medical, so that it's a nice relaxed feeling for them and that is happening across the country. So, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, thanks. That was really, really helpful and, and great to hear about some of these other roles within, within the sector that can really support people. Now, Dr Shaw, you mentioned earlier on about how um, things are changing and we're, we're taking a more digital approach, but I'm interested, uh, Samantha, from a practice manager's point of view, what kind of digital um, offers have we got that are, are helping people in GP practices? Uh, so there's lots available um, out there. The main one that obviously probably is on everybody's mind at the moment is the NHS app. Um, it's a simple and secure um, app that you can access a range of NHS services. Um, you can download it onto a smartphone or a tablet. It is available on um, iPhone or Android, so most devices can download the app. Um, primarily, people have been downloading it recently for their COVID-19 vaccination status, so you can get your COVID um, pass for you to be able to go to events or for travel reasons but also there's much more to the app as well you can get um, information about coronavirus which obviously was really helpful in the beginning of the pandemic um, ordering your repeat prescriptions so if you're on a repeat prescription it's listed within the NHS app which you can then order um, it will then go through to your GP practice and the practice will process your prescription and send it on to your nominated pharmacy if you have one or if you get it from the in-house dispensary then it will be left there for you. Loads of health advice on there so for um, worried parents um, there's some good information on there um, there's also a child health app that Mid and South Essex have uh, produced as well which can give some good advice to parents with young children. Um, you can view your GP health record, so lots of information in there regarding your recent test results, if you've had test results um, and you don't want to call through to the surgery to get those results, they're all available within the NHS app um, and it's all secure um, to be able to get that for you. Um, you can register, um, it also tells you about how the NHS uses your data. Um, I know that was a hot topic a few weeks ago about the um, NHS and sharing data. It is a perfectly secure app um, and it tells you all about the data that we hold on you, how we share this data and who we share your data with as well. Um, GP practice websites, they're a great source of information um, about vaccine clinics, about the services that we offer, who, what staff we have at the practice, any special events that we have coming up. Um, particularly, there was some information recently about Carers Week and wanting to celebrate our carers and volunteers. Um, so that's all really on our on practice websites. Um, NHS 111 online. Um, if you've got a medical problem, you're not sure what to do, 111 online is a really good source um, as well. Also, our community pharmacies, they're, they're full of um, very knowledgeable pharmacists who are there to help for all your medication queries. Um, and they're a source of information for minor illnesses um, and conditions that don't necessarily need to come through to the GP. The pharmacists are so well placed to deal with those that, that they can really 
help us out. So check out the, the uh, local pharmacies in your area for their websites and what they're doing as well. Also in the talking about mental health and probably people struggling at the moment during the pandemic and coming through that, then people can self-refer into talking therapies. It's a direct service. You don't need a referral from your GP. You can self-refer um, into these services. And all of these information um, tools are found on general practice websites, their Facebook pages. Um, and like I say, within the NHS app, which has got a wealth of knowledge and information in there. Excellent. That's really useful. Now, Teresa, you mentioned and, and Samantha, you built on some of the ways that we can help ourselves in terms of um, self-care and accessing education materials. Dr. Shaw, is there anything else that's being done around that that you want to share with us? Yeah, I think I think the key is that we just want to fully encourage patients to contact their GP services. Um, we're, we're here to help in this and I appreciate that it's really really busy but but keep trying because we are that we are there and lots of different practices do different have different ways that you can contact so um some will have email options some will have um, messages through the system some um it, it's all for by the phone lines and everyone's uh, adapting to their population um for me uh, my, my other hat is uh, i'm interested in diabetes and and one of the biggest concerns i've had is actually that sort of population of patients where over over the pandemic has seen uh, as particularly with the lockdown um for various reasons the control of those diabetics has been quite um uh, poor and, and that's not a criticism of anyone that's just um what's what we're seeing and and we're seeing quite high readings coming back from people that were perfectly controlled and we really really desperate to uh, get patients back into the GP practice to see the GP the practice nurses and we didn't actually encourage you to contact us get the blood test done come for your foot checks and um, go to all your screening appointments you know we're in the NHS will um, still encourage people to wear their face masks um, for reasons that we obviously we've got vulnerable patients we've got staff um, that are potentially vulnerable as well but the, the amount of people coming in and out we will still encourage that and I think the NHS England have actually um, supported that stance that that uh, healthcare um, areas um, face masks will still be compulsory post uh, the 19th so I think that the main message is please, please contact us. There's there's lots of, um, as um, we've heard, lots of ways and different resources out there. So it's not always that it's the GP that has the answer. Um, I have excellent staff around me where I don't know the answer to various things. I, if, if you're coming for a dressing, it, you know, don't come and see me, see, see the nurse. They're far more experienced. So it's what you'll find is that we're trying to sort of navigate patients to the best person to deal with their problems uh, and that's the way forward but we want to work as a team and, and that team involves you the patients as well and uh, we're here to help guide you to the best possible care that you can get everyone has a preconception what they think the best care is um, but we're here to negotiate and work out together what that might be. Now, it might end up that, um, that you need to see someone in the hospital. It might be that we can manage things in primary care with the GP. It might be that uh, we need to see mental health services. It might be that we have Terry, the social prescriber, and lots of areas of those. Um, every area will have different resources, different staff, different things available for you. And, and that's based on what sort of issues that they're having. So some might have, um, you know, two or three social prescribers. Some might have more um, emergency care practitioners doing visits because they've got lots of housebound patients. So it's, have a look, look at the websites as well from these practices, an awful lot of information out there that can help. And, and there, are, there are services that, that you may not have realized that are already running, were already running, before and 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 even more so now as uh, as we we know that we're coming out of this pandemic with a lot more work to do if anything more than ever before um, so that's why the this sort of big recruitment drive as well and it's all for you the patients brilliant thank you dr shaw um 
A bit of a difficult question now. We often see our healthcare professionals as superheroes, and they've been they've been painted as heroes across the past eighteen months, and rightly so. But they are still humans, and they are still susceptible to catching this um, this awful virus, this awful pandemic. What can we do to actually support those individuals? Um, and is this a problem that we're experiencing in, in our GP practices across Essex? Samantha, is it is it something that you're noticing in your practice? Absolutely. Um, staff are going into isolation again. We were much back to where we were before when we were all being contact traced. I've got at least three members of staff in isolation this week. Um, so unfortunately that means that they can't work in the practice, but we have adapted our working ways and they are working from home. Um, they do follow the same confidentiality and the same governance as they do at home as what they do in the practice, but they are able to help support the practice by working from home. Um, obviously not the same as being in the surgery, but they are there to offer that help. But it is having a big impact on um, surgeries and surgery staff. Receptionists um, are in isolation, which means we have to find cover at short notice, trying to get the calls answered, keeping up with the demand. It is so, so difficult at the moment. Um, and with the case rising, the case rising and everything, it, it will only get worst we can see so we're trying to limit that the face coverings are so important to to keep wearing your face mask particularly when you're coming into the healthcare settings protect us protect yourselves um we need to be here for you and we need you to help us do that by protecting us by keeping your face masks on and keep safe Brilliant, that's really helpful. And thank you for that reassurance over the confidentiality and the fact that despite the fact that people are having to isolate because they are still human, they're still able to support the service. That's really helpful. Now, a couple of you have mentioned about digital services, about online appointments and so on and so forth. But with a really diverse community we've got, with um, the challenges that some people face accessing digital, um, what are we doing to make things accessible for everybody? Dr. Shaw, I'm going to pick on you, first of all. Mm. Uh, that's okay. Um, no, I mean, we, we, we see these sorts of issues in our practice. As I said, we've got um, uh, quite a diverse range of patients. So it's trying to, it's trying to cater for everyone, and, and that can be difficult. So we, we know that there's a lot of patients that have online access, so having appointments online, um, having digital ways that they can they can be uh, seen or spoken to. Um, in the area, there is a sort of like an artificial intelligence um, tool that most practices will, will be adopting um, uh, called Dr. Link. There's lots of other ones that practices have as well, um, in which questions can be posted and answers uh, can be received by patients. And um, similarly, if those questions that are posed um, require some form of uh, communication or, or appointments or, um, or even visits, for example, they go straight to the GP practice. So we kind of, it, to some extent, it's easier to cater for that uh, proportion of um, patients that have that ability to use their phones, their mobile phones. Lots of practices of different ways of um, tackling um, prescriptions, for example, to try to limit the number of um, phone calls coming to the surgery. So there's different tools out there so that it diverts the call straight through to um, a, a, a sort of a, a digital platform for your medication re-prescribing. Um, the other things that we're looking at for the other side of it is the elderly uh, or the housebound or those that have issues. So patients with learning difficulties as well. We've got uh, a lot of work going on around the area for that. So uh, lots of practices have a team of um, professionals. So, you know, GP, nurses uh, and community service all working together um, in, I suppose you can call it a frailty team to some extent, but there, there's different needs in different areas. And um, so they will get contacted frequently to make sure that they're okay. Uh, lots of areas use those services to link in with social prescribers, um, depending on the needs that they've got. So they have frequent, I suppose, what you call touch points, so that if there's any issues, they can be raised. Uh, lots of practices have um, 
uh, like a hotline for those that um, if they're needing visits, they can come straight through to, to sort of uh, not hang on waiting too long in the in the phone queue for other things. Um, uh, we've got various uh, visiting services around, as I mentioned before, um, that can help with those care home projects. There's a lot of work in um, mid and South Essex around care homes and lots of support uh, from, from the, the, the sort of governing members, as it were, in terms of linking care homes to practices and these network of practices so that um, regular frequent checks are done on those patients. Uh, lots were done anyway, but it's trying to almost have a home allocated to an area rather than multiple GPs um, so that you can almost do your ward rounds, for example, and see those patients more frequently. Um, and we're doing similar work with, uh, with patients with learning difficulties. And, and obviously with COVID, we've been very worried about uh, them as well. Um, so we're trying to continue and sort of up our learning difficulty checks, make sure that they've had regular uh, touch points and checks as well. Thanks, Dr. Shaw. It's really useful. We've done some work at Healthwatch Essex around accessibility during the pandemic um, and some work with um, Healthwatch Suffolk as well as Essex County Council, um, which really identifies some of those challenges and some of the things that are happening to really support those individuals. Um, I'm very conscious that the past couple of years have been dominated by COVID, but people still get ill with other ailments. And we are approaching, you know, I know we haven't really had summer yet, but we are approaching winter season. Um, Samantha, what's happening um, in, in terms of that? Well, you say we're still in summer, but we're planning our flu campaigns. Um, so for general practice, um, right now we're in the middle of trying to plan our flu campaign for all of our patients. Um, that involves looking at premises that where we're able to hold our clinics and figuring out exact delivery dates from the suppliers as to when these um, vaccines will be delivered. Um, so really, I guess the message out to the, to the patients is when you are called for your flu vaccine, please come and get your flu vaccine that will definitely help protect you through the winter. Um, obviously that will be with your COVID booster as well. We'll be offering that to you. Um, keep an eye on your practices, Facebook pages, websites, and they will be in touch with you when it's time to book for your flu vaccine and your COVID vaccine as well. So yeah, protect yourself this, this coming winter with your flu vaccine. We will be working closely with the community pharmacies um, as GP practices. The, um, the grouping is extended again this year to our um, up to the age of 50. So we've gone down to the 50 year olds again for this year. So that's a much larger group than what general practice is used to doing. And um, so our community pharmacists will be helping support our programme as well. So together we'll be able to hopefully deliver a really good flu campaign like we did last year as well. Fantastic. It's important to know that, you know, we're still catching or still susceptible to catching flu and colds and coughs and not every time you have a cough is it covid but people still get poorly this time of year okay so we've covered an awful lot in the last sort of 45 minutes um and i'm conscious that we've talked a lot about specific things so we've talked about nhs app and we've talked about um some of the other roles and and so on and so forth um we're going to put in the comments section links to a lot of this information. So if you haven't got it straight away, don't panic. You should be able to click on one of the links within the comments uh, or yeah, the comments section, feedback section, whatever you want to call it, um, to be able to link to more information on all of those things. But if there's something that we've spoken about and you want more information and you can't see it in the comments section, just ask the question and someone will get back to you with, with additional information. And this is our first one of these sort of Facebook events. So we're really keen for feedback as well. If you think it went well, if you think it didn't, if you've got further questions or further topics that you'd like to have more information about, please put a note in the comments section. It's how we're going to learn. Now, I just want to do a quick run round and um, ask Dr. Shaw, is there any anything we haven't covered yet? Anything else you want to talk about that, that's happening or has happened or that we can do to support one another? 
Um, I'm, I'm sure there's an awful lot that's going on and there's an awful lot of questions that patients have. And I, I think the first thing to say is that I'm probably biased, but I think you know, the NHS in general is probably one of the greatest achievements that we've we've created in, in the United Kingdom. And, and we should cherish that. And we are all here to work together. Um, we do it because we love it. And I, I'm incredibly passionate about um, uh, primary care GP work uh, and things are, are changing for the better um, services are adapting to the needs of patients and we want you to contact us we don't want to be having those discussions that, that sadly we've been having with some patients about late presentations of various things you know if you're worried then then contact us and talk to us it doesn't matter if if it's a over the phone or, or we need to get you in for a for a face-to-face -face appointment the main thing is that we are here and i you know don't don't worry too much the the, the phone lines are busy because we, we're dealing with a year's worth of work in a short space of time just keep trying be patient we are here and we, we've never stopped and we never will we are always going to be here for you fantastic it's really good to hear Samantha, any closing comments from you, from your perspective as practice manager? Um, I guess as practice manager, um, I would just like to say how incredibly proud I am of the GP staff across the Mid and South Essex. Um, it's been a really hard job um, over the last 18, 18 months. Um, and the staff have just been so good. They, they really have stood up to all of the challenges that has faced them, changing in procedures, changing the way that we worked, instantly switching to a different model of care, stepping up to the vaccination programme. I am just so proud of every single one of them and the way in which they have dealt with this um, pandemic and the changing circumstances and everything. So for me, I would just like to say a massive thank you to everybody in primary care for everything that they have done to help keep everybody as safe as they have. I think everyone's going to um, echo that. Um, Samantha, I think it's a really valid point, well made. So I suppose in summary, if I had some closing comments, they would be keep accessing your GP services. They're still open. They've always been open. They've always been there and they want to support you. There are more than just doctors at GP practices. There are loads of different roles from the social prescribers that um, Teresa's talked about to the mental health professionals and those advanced prescribers. There are loads of people out there looking to help you. Help them by wearing your mask when you go and see them, making sure that you look after yourself, however that may be, access that information online. But most importantly, be kind. Be kind to each other, be kind to your professionals. So my final comment today is just a massive thank you. Thank you for dialing in and listening to this. Thank you to my panel for giving up your evening for all the prep you've done and all that you do day to day. And thank you to the team that you can't see who have helped set all this up behind the scenes, have been gathering the questions, have been putting these events on and could continue to keep us informed. So that's all from me. Thank you, panel. Thank you, everybody else. Unless there's any closing comments, I'll, I'll close today. Excellent. Thanks ever so much.